A few guys in my life I have seen made women swoon, okay? Swoon, I'm talking about, ah, you know. Well, that should cross me up, okay? You ready? Let's go. All right, here we go. One, two, three, pay me. Pay me my ass. You know damn well rock does not be paid. So lucky is a show, it was on FX. Lucky is, a, is like the first show thing I got a regular part in. It was uh, John Corbett, the star, and John Corbett was off of uh, Sex and the City. And there's uh, a few guys in my life I have seen made women swoon, okay? Swoon, I'm talking about, <sighs> you know. He's one of them, I'm one of them. He was, he was just, he's just this, you know, cool dude and gigantic star and I'm working beside him and I, you know, I'm brand new to the game. Um, Billy Gardell, who was my brother and, uh, and Billy was that like veteran comic and we were both comics and just like, we were giddy. Like, <laughs> like you can't see that, you know, if you just see Billy like you, but it is just, just this sweetheart, incredible actor. And you know, we were just on it together and it was, uh, it was all brand new. I remember how I got that role, Rob Cullen and Mark Cullen, the brothers who wrote Lucky, they, uh, they said they were searching for an actor who cared about his friend. And so there's one line, uh, cause John Corbett's character, Lucky, he needed money and we were doing whatever we could to help. And I was like, can you get a couple more days? And he was like, something about the way you just, uh, you cared about him. You, you didn't just throw the line away, this and that. So, you know, you never know what that one line will get you. But yeah, and then we shot in Vegas. I gambled my check away the first day. So, that was weird. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we, uh, like, that's lucky for you. And it was, uh, you know, I played Mother Legendre. <laughs> Buddy Mother Legendre, but they called me Mother on the show. I need to fill out this form. Okay. Well, I just I know I don't know how it works exactly. See, my name is um, Buffet, and my husband's name is Hannigan. So is it supposed to be Buffet Hannigan or Hannigan Buffet? It can be anything you want. Well, not anything. <laughs> yeah, anything. Oh, this could take a while. <laughs> Get out of my line. Okay. Friends was an amazingly huge deal. I went to the audition, and, and I, I, I improvised something get out of my line or something like, cause I was, cause Phoebe was getting her name changed. She eventually got changed to Banana Hammock. I went to the audition and I got the call back. And then I, I was on, I stand up, I was on the lot. And I remember getting there super early and, and walking in and somebody was like, can I help you? Like they thought I was up to something. I was like, no, I'm good. You know, I was, I know. So yeah, you, know, you spend a week on Friends, you know, it's a multicam. And I didn't meet the cast until like uh, the day we shot. But it was, it was weak there, and and then on the day, you did the scene. I was doing the scene with Phoebe, Lisa Kudrow. Shout out Lisa. I improvised, but nobody else heard. And then Lisa was like, "Okay, you do that for the pitch." I know what she's talking about. Okay, what's the pitch? So we're gonna do it a couple of times, and then you, we have a pitch, and you do it with the pitch. I mean, we did the scene, and then she at least like he has a pitch, so we did the scene again. And at the end of it, I was like, "Get out of my line." And I made it, you know. So I guess I was kind of a writer on Friends. Yeah, Friends was uh, amazingly huge. You know, it was like the, I got in there at the nick of time too. It was like the fourth episode to the end of the whole shebang. Hey guys, Jan is ready for you. Okay, bring it home now. And don't forget the new black man phrase I taught you. Pippity poppy, give me the zabbat. Yes, sir. Remember that. On The Office, Daryl's part, and I wish I could take credit for that, but Daryl's part, it, it just grew. They were taking, you know, what they had and they expanded on everything. Uh, and it grew to the point, like it was, used to be more improvisation, but, one, but the writers were so good. Like they started to write stuff the way Daryl would say it. And that's what they did for everybody. So my, you know, my character came in, Daryl Warehouse, Got established in the fourth episode, and the fifth episode it was uh, the basketball episode. My first thing in, in the office was just me like watching Dwight <laughs> get out of a box. 
And I'm just staring at him like, you know, you wouldn't believe how many takes it took to get just me staring at the work, like, you know, he's like, no, I'm more, <laughs> more this, more that. What's up, what's up? I'm Mr. Robinson, what's up for the week? You can call me Craig, Mr. C, MC Craigie Craig. <laughs> Look, I'm not like your other teachers. I went to school here. I'm one of you. And in my class, we don't just listen to music, we make music. Mr. Robinson, it was a six episode show I did for NBC. I played Craig Robinson as a music teacher. It was similar to my life. I, I was a music teacher in Chicago. It, it changed from the story I wanted to tell as far as me, you know, in the city school and seven foot principal with the, with the uh, uh, itty bitty, uh, a black lady, old school principal, I mean, vice principal. It, it, was, it was just a lot, a lot going on. And it turned into, you know, Mr. Robinson. And they, they, you know, gracefully gave us six episodes. It was a, a great experience. I, I, I worked with some of the kids. Uh, um, Amanda Lestenberg came through that show and, and blessed us. It was short lived. And I wonder what would happen if we stayed with the, the inner city story. But that was also Rob and Mark Cullen from, uh, Lucky, so I got to work with them again. I'm not ready for puberty. I'm good to wait. Oh, no, no, Nick. It's not your decision. In fact, check your mons. Hey, Nick. What it do? We're your curly new pals. Are we in Tampa? Because it's hot and stinky. And I don't want to be here. In Big Mouth, I play pubic hair number two. Uh, yes, <laughs> one of uh, Nick Crow's <laughs> pubic hairs. Uh, that came about because they asked me to do it. It is so stupid that I was like, yes, yes, I'm down. But no, I wasn't gunning. I, <laughs> that wasn't, I wasn't part of the dream. <laughs> you can't just do it yourself. No, not without access to the database. But you're the best. The master. Ain't that true? Uh, Mr. Robot, dark. It was dark, it was dark mood, which is what you need for that show to be as successful. I think as, as well, it was heavy on set. It was no lightness, you know. Not to anybody was mean or anything like that. Just because it, it was a dark show, uh, so it was a, a immediate like change for me. Just like wow, this is something else. Man. It taught me. You know, my, one of my acting teachers, Ivana Chubbuck, would say, "Comedy, drama is ping pong. Comedy is tennis." And like, I got to see it and it's like, oh, you gotta really, really live. You know, comedy is like, bam, 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 here's the joke. These moments, you know, they take time. So uh, that's one of the lessons I learned from doing that. I love insects. Mosquitoes are an evil, deadly species. Doesn't the fact that they drink human blood sicken you? Yeah. Yeah. Sure about that. You guys are the ones at the Mosquito Club. <laughs> Just... What about other creatures that drink human blood? Creatures with sharp teeth, stupid accents. What we do in the shadows <laughs> was so much fun and, and funny and, and stupid, but when we did the vampires and like they, it was scary. Like you really was, you didn't know where they were gonna pop out from. I barely knew what they looked like. It was one, and one, and when they looked real scary, it was one dude. Oh man, it was tense. Going, we was really going around like it was a haunted house. Like, ah! and I played a vampire hunter. And I, one of the coolest things about that was um, I said, I know Canadian actors are, oh, they are magnifique. Um, they just you know improv and play together, and oh, it was beautiful. So I said, um, okay, just go with me. Whatever I, whatever I say, just say kill. Repeat, kill teaching them how to kill vampires. I'm like, so what if it's a, what if it's a grandpa vampire? Kill, what if it's a baby vampire? Kill, you know, they, and that made it in the cut, you know? That was like a beautiful thing to see. Hey, hey, it's the law! You didn't kill it, Okay, ah! okay, okay, what? stay calm, just remember, it's more scared than you are! Ah! Killing it, I played Craig Foster, you know, live in Miami, and he's down, he needs some cash, and he, and so uh, he finds a way to get it, which is, uh, to hunt pythons because there's a, a large grand, cash grand prize. So that's how he finds his, finds his way out in the first season, and now we're on season two. What does he do once he gets uh, some of the things he desires? Uh, my relationship with snakes is, uh, you know, I was, I guess like anybody else, afraid of snakes all the time without even having interacted with them because Indiana Jones and the Bible, 
But then one day, uh, I was in Australia with my band, the Nasty Delicious, and we went to a sanctuary. And then my band, when they were taking pictures with the snake, and I was like, eh. So then I got in the picture, and I was pretending like I was going to touch it, but no, so you could give me like that. But funny thing, I did touch it, and it felt amazing. And then I ended up putting it around my neck, and it was so, you know, sweet and docile. I was like, oh, this is, what? I've been running from these. You know? Now I'm not gonna go to a swamp and be like, come here, snake. But yeah, that happens. So now I don't mind them, you know? Being on the show a few times, I mean, it was a talk show, or uh, we just filmed with a gigantic 15-foot uh, python. So I'm not uh, uh, worried where I think before 2015, it would have been a problem. Yeah.